and John Snyder. Thank you very much, Tim Brando. Just about ready here for the start of half number two in Morgantown, West Virginia. Mountaineers on top, 14 to three, and uh, one gets the feeling, Stan, that they can uh, almost smell that undefeated season. Well, they have to be getting close to it anyhow. Obviously, they got a half, they're up 11 points going into the second half. They know they got the Fiesta Bowl ahead of them with Notre Dame. Two, uh, three things had to happen for the national championship. Notre Dame had to win today, they did. West Virginia has to win today. They're ahead 14 to three, and Notre Dame's got to beat USC next week to get that big matchup. So obviously West Virginia hopes to win the second half, win the game, and root like heck for Notre Dame next week against USC. And like Bino just said, everyone will be rooting for the Irish. I don't know about the West Coast. <laughs> yeah, my thoughts exactly. Oh my, almost touched at the five. The second back, the deep back, will bring it across the 20 out to about the 25-yard line, 23-yard return. Well, let's take a look at the numbers after the first 30 minutes of play. As you go down, you'll see they are very similar for both teams. Total yardage, only 18 yards difference. In fact, Syracuse has more yards, but look at that. Four turnovers every game is decided by big plays, and there's no bigger play than a turnover. You got four of them against you. You're going to be down. You're lucky to only be down by 11. So West Virginia opens up on offense here at half number two. Major Harris at the controls one more time. Quick dive play. Craig Taylor for about four yards. Now let's head down to the sidelines to John Snyder. All right, thank you very much, Denny. Uh, Daryl Whitmore, who is a starting defensive back for West Virginia, fractured his ankle in the first half. Obviously, he's out for the rest of the game. Both coaches agree that West Virginia is a little bit lucky to be leading in this game. They felt it was a fairly even game, except for the turnovers. And Dick McPherson told me, he said, they've got to make their breaks in the second half. Alvin Phillips and Reggie Rembrandt split out wide to the left. Second down. the corner past the perimeter and nearly took that one the distance good blocking again on the perimeter the pitch man was blocked out of bounds by the wide receiver if you can get the loaded man blocked watch as they go down the line of scrimmage they're going to take away Freiburg's just waiting for Major Harris see on the outside Craig Taylor the fullback made a good block on the defensive back number 38 David Holmes that opened it up for the running back on the pitch Eight yards on the carry, first down and ten. Rembrandt in motion this time for the Mountaineers. Make to the fullback. Harris stops. Jukes gets wrapped up as he crashes across the 45. I should say out to about the 47. Again, good pursuit this time from the backside. Keith Freiberg, who was all the way on the outside, on the backside of the play, took the right angle. He just sunk down right around the line of scrimmage and caught Major Harris from behind. That's a play where you can really cause a fumble. You get your arm and swing through the football from behind and pop it out. But with Major Harris, you're just hoping to get him down. Major Harris has averaged better than five and a half yards a carry thus far in his two-year career here in West Virginia. Second down and six. Reverse on the action. Thinks about it a moment. And this one is loose and finally out of bounds. So maybe the decision that time by the sophomore, not quite what he won. <laughs> yeah, that's one of the poorest decisions you'll ever see an option quarterback make. He pitched real late, and the man he was pitching to was already knocked down by Chris Ingham. Watch this again. Which way they want him to run? East and west. Down the line of scrimmage. Don't turn up. Now watch this late pitch. There's not even a man there. He's already knocked down. And they will see him. They'll see Chris Ingham had already knocked the man down. If he would have been able to watch the football, we'll see Chris Ingham come up right here, knock the pitch man down. He should have never thrown that football. Luckily, it went out of bounds. Third and eight with trip receivers out. His formation. There he goes. He's on the spread across midfield. Oh, over the top he goes and ends up at about the 42-yard line. Chris Ingram in on the tackle, but Harris that time went airborne. I, why they line up at anything else sometimes, I wonder. This spreads the defense out and creates all these gaps for Harris to take advantage of, either throwing or running. You see, there's only four men rushing, and those aren't guys that can make tackles on Major Harris. He just gets into the secondary, uses his a great a running ability to make big yardage. I'd stay in that formation all day. 14 yards on that carry for Harris. First and 10. Play action. Major sets up. Going for the home run. Rembrandt down deep. Had it and dropped it at the last 
moment. Great coverage that time in the secondary, and that was a near touchdown. Well, that's the type of play that Rembert's been making all year. And he had the position to make the catch because he kept his body between him and the defensive back. Ingram really gets lucky sticking his hand in here and hitting the football. But watch Rembert use his body to block off Ingram. He's between him and the ball. Ingram just comes up and knocks the ball away. If he, Luckily, he didn't come down with that football because he had better position than the defensive back did. Second down now in 10. Harris that time wanted it all. Mountaineers lead 14 to 3. A.B. Brown stacked up at about the 41 after a short game. David Bavaro, the first to meet him. Now they'll probably come back to the three wide receivers. <laughs> and one thing you got to talk about from Syracuse's standpoint, they're missing their nickel back. Jeff Buskirk was hurt yesterday in a drill, recovering an onside kick with no pads on. He went down to recover it, separated his shoulder. He's a fifth-year senior, and that hurts their nickel coverage, especially against this formation with all the wide receivers. Harris going to sprint out left, sets up, now looks back the other way, has all day. Now he's flushed out of the pocket across the 36, near the 35, but that's going to be about three yards shy of the first down. Rob Burnett in on the tackle. Fourth down, four down territory. If you're off the long field goal, it'd be over 50 yards, but they're sending out a kicking unit. It's the punter coming out. You almost think, suit line up in that same formation, go back to pass. If a short one's open, throw it. If not, let him scramble for the first down. Lance carry on. On to punt. Chris Ingram back deep inside his tent. Pretty good rush. This one's going to float up, looking for the corner. Going to quite get that. It'll be first down and 10 from the 20 yard line for Syracuse. We'll take a break here. It's West Virginia 14, Syracuse. And we're back 14 to 3. Syracuse trailing. They've got the football. They've driven the ball pretty well here thus far this evening, but they've coughed it up on four different occasions. Play action. Fake the screen one way, back the other. Daryl Johnston's got some blocking. Flip. Slides down at the 37-yard line, but the yellow flag is out. Well, we talked about the fact that Syracuse has moved the football stand, but they have put it on the ground. Well, watch those lines show how far they've been able to move the football, but at the end, except one punt and one field goal, the rest of them are turnovers. Four of them, they only punted one time in the first half, but they only got three points. There was a clip on number 53, John Flannery, who was leading Daryl Johnson on the uh, double screen. Made good yards, but... They have clipping on the offense, half the distance to the goal line, first down. And really, and really, Bo Orlando turns his back on him right there, turns his back to the to the uh, blocker, and almost forces the clip. I don't know if he did it on purpose or just worked out that way, but he really turned to him because you don't want to turn that way to come back and make the tackle. First down now in 20, the inside the 10 yard line for Syracuse. The fullback Johnston crashing out across the 30-yard line. Three different players finally bring him down after 23 yards on the run. Alvoid Mays instrumental in the tackle. Well, you saw it took him a long time to get the snap. He was audibly. They came out the dime defense with very few linebackers. Only four linemen in the game. They just handed to the fullback up the middle. We've seen him defeat the dime every time they come in with the running play. Watch Herring's the only linebacker in the game. And watch him come through right here. Does a good job getting through the line of scrimmage. Come from the side. There's misses a couple defensive backs. Big, strong fullback. And now with some better operating, Louis Orange can go to work. With 10.45 left in the third quarter. Trailing 14 to 3. On the pitch, Drummond stops. Finally driven out of bounds at about the 41-yard line by Bo Orlando. A side light to this whole option running game is the downfield blocking. Both teams have tight ends that get downfield and block well. They have wide receivers that block well. That time it was Deval Glover who blocked the defensive back on that side, Al Boyd Mays, that opened up the field for the running back to get the seven yards that he got. 
Deval Glover and Pat Davis split out wide to the left. The bottom of the screen, it's number 14, Rob Moore. Not going to pass yet thus far. The leading receiver for Syracuse coming into this one. And off to the deep back drum, and he is swarmed under at about the 40-yard line. The man initiating the charge, Chris Parker, and also Mike Fox. Good penetration by the defensive line. You watch it, they get into the backfield on that quick trap, that quick counter. You see number 98, Jim Gray, the middle guard, really got the penetration, got a hand on Drummond, slowed him up to the pursuit. Penetration kills, especially counter play from Excuse me. Big third down play now for Syracuse. Bill Cox with a quick out, and Moore brings this one in. Al Boyd Mays wraps him up across the 45, but it's enough for the first down. And let's now head down to the sidelines to John Snyder and then chat about a fantasy cheerleader. <laughs> Denny, you know, you've heard of Queen for a day. This is cheerleader for a day. As Sheila Lambert, who is not a student here at uh, West Virginia, why are you here? I entered a contest for the sports fantasy, and I asked to be a cheerleader for West Virginia University to cheer with my old cheerleading sponsor for her, Bobby Borman. And this is your fantasy. Now, I've watched you tonight, and it's not really a great night out. It's kind of miserable, but you're having time of your life. Look at this. I'm loving it. Yeah, it's a great fun. The West Virginia University cheerleaders are great. Everybody down here is great. All right, thank you very much. Well, I don't blame her if she cheers on that play because it was a terrific defensive play. Sacked at about the 45. The big question is, will they be taking her to Tempe, Arizona? <laughs> That would be the ultimate fantasy for everybody in West Virginia to go to the Fiesta Bowl and play Notre Dame for the national championship. Again, penetration. Chris Parker that time coming free on a line stunt completely follows up the timing of the option play. It's a counter option. The quarterback's delaying the count. And when he delayed, number 94, Chris Parker was all over and draped on his back. Loss of three, second down and 13 facing Todd Philcox, the senior out of Norwalk, Connecticut. On screen down. Straight drop. Looks upfield. Makes the throw and it's picked off. Uh oh. This is all the way down the sidelines for Willie Edwards. On the screen, he's looking for Daryl Johnson out of the backfield again. That's twice. They know they like to go to him. Twice they've intercepted balls thrown in his direction. This time, a good break on the ball by Willie Edwards, and this time down the sidelines for six. The big defensive play provided by the senior out of Morgantown, West Virginia, in his own backyard, and the ears now pinning him back. It's 21 3, West Virginia. One thing West Virginia was going to be aware of, and that's Daryl Johnson, the fullback. Here he sneaks out of the backfield, and watch Willie Edwards be aware of Daryl Johnson. Cut right in front of Johnson, come up with a tip ball, and you can hear Beano Cook cheering, stay in bounds and get in the end zone all the way down the sideline for Willie Edwards. I don't even think Beano could have caught him from behind. <laughs> Beano didn't want to catch him from behind. <laughs> He's saying, you're right, Beano, we are number one. Final 32-31 in a thriller at the Carrier Dome. The Mountaineers right now threatening to take care of Syracuse here early in the second half. Owens at the 12. To about the 22, and he is met solidly there, making it across to about the 27. There's Willie Edwards, and uh, no bigger interception in his career. 5'8", 186 pounds senior. That's his second interception of the season. Uh, he has the team lead and passes broken up, 
And you can see why the ball sort of bounced off his hands, but that time it bounced right back into them in a very opportune situation going right down the sideline. Practicing his own tip drill, and I wonder if some of these West Virginia fans are starting to make some travel arrangements. Bill Shar in a quarterback. First time we've seen him here this evening. Has not played much since the Ohio State game. And stunned right at the line of scrimmage. Maybe a loss of about a half a yard. Big play that time by Chris Parker. So Dick McPherson right now pulling out all the stops because of the five turnovers. And talk about Bill Sharp coming in that Ohio State game. That's the only game that Syracuse has lost in two years. And it was because Phil Cox had a bad game. Well, he's having a poor game. And you have to wonder what the thumb had to do with it. Talking to McPherson last night, Dick McPherson, he, it was worse this week than it ever had been all season long. It was black and blue, and he was going to play it by ear to see how far he went with Phil Cox. He has to feel that he has to make the change now. Davis in motion. Second down and 10 play. Shar unprotected lets it go. And Moore was turning back up field. Never even saw him. I think that was a miscommunication there. It was, and they've had a lot of miscommunications because they've had five turnovers, three interceptions, two fumbles. West Virginia has turned that into 14 points. Because when you make an interception for a touchdown, that's a double turnover. So you might as well make that six turnovers because you're getting a touchdown and the football at the same time. So that's as bad as two turnovers. Shar is only a sophomore, but uh, offensive coordinator George DeLeon said, uh, hey, we don't have any problem putting him in there if uh, we need to use him. He's probably the best pure passer that's ever gone to Syracuse. Well, now that they're down 21 to 3, you can bet that West Virginia will be coming, though. Quarterback draw, Sharp pulled down from behind at about the 31 yard line. Going to bring up a fourth down situation, and uh, the fans appreciative of the defensive stand. Anticipated the big blitz too, hoping that they could split the blitz with a quarterback draw. And everybody else running away with their defensive uh, coverage. Shar just uh, doesn't have the McPherson feet to do that. The Don McPherson feet. Gardner bobbles it. Now he's going to get the kick away. What a play that was. Grantis Bell had come up after he watched the fumble. This one's going to roll inside the 20 and what a miraculous play by Cooper Gardner who also looks like he's injured that was a great play and one that really may have kept them in the football game now Cooper Gardner started a strong safety for this team early in his career but had a concussion problem he turned himself into a punter so the guy is an athlete and he shows it here even though he drops the football watching break containment there by Preston Waters and then get the ball off in almost quick kick fashion Ends up 52 yards from where it started, and that was a miracle play for number 29. That's one they could have used in Ireland this morning as a rugby kick. The rain starting to pelt down now. Nice opening, hole for A.B. Brown across the 25-yard line, tackled by Marcus Paul. They're wearing down Syracuse. That time they just picked up David Navarro and put him right back on his back. That opened up the hole for the Syracuse uh, running back, Anthony Brown. Now, if you're Don Neal and Stan, do you just want to keep that thing on the ground? Well, you want to do what you've been doing. I mean, you're up 21 to 3. Power football is what's winning for them. It's starting to rain harder. And everything's working for you right now. 6.15, the clock is rolling here in quarter number three. 21 to 3. Mountaineers on top. Pitch back, and this time wrapped up for little or no gain is A.B. Brown. Now let's head back to the studio to Tim Brando. Jimmy Schreiner in Pullman, Washington. The Washington State Cougars, who are Aloha bound, Aloha bull bound, have turned the ball over four times. Here's an interception by Rosenbach. He's picked off by Lee Lo Lang, and he returns it in for a touchdown. That made it 21-9. Moments later, Rosenbach would come right back. Watch him find his favorite target, Tim Stallworth. 11 yards to strike. It's 21-16. Washington leading Washington State. Thank you very much, Tim Brando. And uh, Major Harris tried to run the option play to the right and got belted right at the line of scrimmage by Keith Freiberg. Little or no gain there. Hey, if 
you enjoyed this one coming up a little later from Baton Rouge, Louisiana, number three, Miami at LSU. That starts at 9 p.m. Eastern, CFA football action on ESPN. And if you're any place close to West Virginia, you've enjoyed this one. That time, Major Harris took a big hit, but just got enough yardage for the first down. At least they signaled maybe Syracuse is now requesting a measurement. You are allowed to do that. Well, we've talked and tried to set the tone about this state in the way that it's uh, just infatuated with West Virginia football and basketball. And for the fans in this area, it's been a long time coming. But if they go undefeated here in 1988, it'll be a year that none of them will ever forget. It'll be a uh, cross-country trek coming from West Virginia down to the Fiesta Bowl in Tempe, Arizona. And of course, on the other side of the ledger, a disappointed Todd Philcox. 8 of 15, only 64 yards, three interceptions. And I think the toughest play of the night for Philcox was on the option when he ran it inside the five. He could have maybe tied the game and coughed it up, and that's where West Virginia turned things around. Again, you have to think that the re-injured thumb that he had last week has a big bearing on this football game. He fumbled, carrying the ball in his right hand, and he threw three interceptions. Well, off the option. Harris scrambling for daylight. He's being chased and hit from behind, but gets the pass off at the last moment. And uh, what a tribute to his athletic ability to get leveled like that and still be able to get the pass off. Yeah, one of the advantages Major Harris has is in college, they don't have an in-the-grasp rule because he'd have been down in the NFL. But here, he's able to get the ball off on his way down, and he saves 15 yards. Of course, you're taking the risk that somebody's going to uh, hit you as you throw that football it's gonna pop up in the air and turn this football game around again But Major Harris and this whole West Virginia football team has had everything going for him all year long including tonight Out of Pittsburgh, Pennsylvania the amazing thing already in just two years. He's already accounted for 35 West Virginia touchdowns Reverse option this time And up near the 35 is the tailback Keith Freiburg in on the tackle AB Brown one more time with a run let's head down to the sidelines now to John Snyder you, you and Stan have speculated on it Denny that uh, Todd Philcox I just double checked he's not hurt he simply had uh, obviously a very very rough night you take a look at his numbers and passing wise by the end of the year he will almost do what McPherson did last year but tonight things have not gone well obviously John Snyder trying to stay dry down there on the sidelines Oh, good. That's what Phil Cox had told us yesterday. McPherson gave us a little different story. We talked during the night about the injury. Harris around the right side, out of bounds at about the 39 yard line. Looks to be enough. And uh, Terry Woodman on the tackle that time. Syracuse has done a good job of containing Major Harris. He's made a couple big uh, scrambles off the spread formation, but under normal situations, they've contained him well. They just have not contained their own problems, their own turnovers, their own fumbles and interceptions. And Syracuse, a very sound team, both offensively and defensively, not a team that makes a great deal of mistakes. Tailback one more time for a couple yards out to about uh, the 42. about uh, the great fanfare here in Morgantown, West Virginia. Well, let's take a look at uh, some of the crowds that they've had this year. Boy, look at the Penn State, 68,811, but right behind that one, better than 65,000 on hand here tonight. Yep, only a, under 1,000, a little over 1,000 less in the Penn State game. Second down and eight play. Back to the tailback. Now he'll hit A.B. Brown, who coughs it up, incomplete. You're talking about a crowd uh, that's probably affected by, one, the weather and you know, a lot of football games being played today that uh, a lot of these people missed to get down here because we came down here, what, four, three and a half hours before the game and there was a traffic jam. It took us an extra half hour to get in here. So, uh, you know, this is a very loyal crowd. Now, you look at Syracuse for the year, you bring up the fact there are a plus four and only committed 16 turnovers for the entire year coming into this game. And they have not the most prolific passing numbers, but he's getting the job done. Suck 
It's in the defense, and now it's a race for the sidelines, and Major Harris basically winning the race and stepping across the 50-yard line. <laughs> I don't know. I guess maybe they use that formation more to clear everybody out and give Harris room to, room to run. Again, the single back offense. Fullback stays in there to help with protection. They send everybody downfield. Now, we asked last night if they were going to put somebody specifically on Major Harris in this formation. called a spy technique or a cop. You need a defensive back or somebody with great ability on Harris. But they're going to have to do that because every time he's dropped back in that formation, he has scrambled for big yardage. First down and 10 for the Mountaineers. Taylor, the hard-running fullback, belted from behind, but not before he picks up some nice yardage. Tackled by Freiberger. Brings up second down now and short, and West Virginia offensive line stand starting to wear down that Syracuse defense. Oh, they are wearing this team down. I mean, mentally more than anything else to go with the physical part of it, but when you keep playing well defensively, you look at the scoreboard, it's 21 to 3. It's demoralizing. And an average better than 54 points a game here in Morgantown this year. Terry Wooden in on the tackle. Down near the 35, though, goes A.B. Brown. You can tell also that you're getting close to a championship. Watch that. They're coming off the line. They're hitting people. I mean, when you're excited offensively, you got the adrenaline flowing. See, they're knocking people back. They're making the tackle four and five yards downfield. When you're knocking people back, you're winning football games. Clock continues to roll. A.B. Brown tries to get to the corner, but a nice job there at the perimeter by... Keith Freiberg. Syracuse has not done a bad job on the perimeter. They have forced most of the runners, and Major Harris in particular, to keep running sideways on the outside plays. The problem has been the turnovers offensively, and then, of course, some of the power game that they've been really struck with up the middle. They've been getting knocked back, and again, the adrenaline and the excitement is all on the side of West Virginia right now. And of course, they're playing at home, but they're undefeated this season. Tailback football one more time. And this has just become a, basically a grind-out contest for West Virginia. Yeah, they're undefeated on the road, too. <laughs> That's right. <laughs> <laughs> Notre Dame in the Fiesta Bowl. Of course, Bino Cook uh, months and months ago said West Virginia was going to be the number one team. Everybody looked at him like uh, he had finally lost it. He had reached that age where he went over the hill. Yeah, but uh, Bino had a surprise for all of us, didn't he? Now he's got those fingers crossed. Let's see how he uh, picks next week's game. Lamond in motion. Play action now. Harris tries to square up. Finally does. And nearly picking that one off was David Bavaro, who stepped right in front of the intended receiver. Yeah, he needed to borrow his brother's hands to make that catch. Mark Bavaro, of course, the great tight end for the New York Giants, who makes a lot of one-handed catches. His uh, younger brother, David, just couldn't come up with the one there. But that's a big play because it forces a fourth-down situation. At least they stopped West Virginia and made him attempt a long field goal, 48 yards. Charlie Bowman is on. His uh, longest of the season is 49 yards. Well, it looked like he slipped on the attempt. It was uh, heading for the crossbar, but not enough gas. 59 seconds left here in quarter number three. It's West Virginia 21, Syracuse 3. Dreamed of going to. 
I can just see it now. National TV showing thousands of us in our blue and gold chanting, let's go Mountaineers. <sighs> We've been to a lot of bowls. <laughs> There's some great memories from those bowls. But I have a feeling this one might be the best yet. Key Centurion Bank Shares congratulates the Mountaineers and wishes them the best of luck in the Fiesta Bowl. Lock brakes. The most powerful engine in its class. Full-time, four-wheel drive capability. And room for five. Being superior in these areas makes Cherokee superior in these areas. Save up to $1,600 on select 1989 Jeep Cherokees. Tim Brando back in our college football studios. A quick development. Earlier this week, the Dallas Morning News reported that George Smith, a former running back at Texas A&M, had received hush money, $4,400 worth, from Jackie Sherrill. He is now denying that charge in the Dallas Morning News. More on this coming a bit later throughout the day. Let's get back now to West Virginia. Well, being an old kicker used to missing, you always want to have a good excuse. Well, Charlie Bauman has one here. Watch his plant foot, the left foot, slide out from under him, and that's why he missed this kick. Of course, Charlie's had a uh, rough couple weeks. He missed three last week after having a great season for the first nine games. Well, in your career at Ohio State, though, you set a couple of kicking records, didn't you, Stan? Uh, yeah, in the same season, most made and most missed <laughs> after a attempt. So, uh, it happens. The Orangemen need something to happen here in a big hurt. Well, being an old kicker used to missing, you always want to have a good excuse. Well, Charlie Bauman has one here. Watch his plant foot, the left foot, slide out from under him, and that's why he missed this kick. Of course, Charlie's had a uh, rough couple weeks. He missed three last week after having a great season for the first nine games. Well, in your career at Ohio State, though, you set a couple of kicking records, didn't you, Stan? Uh, yeah, in the same season, most made and most missed <laughs> after a attempt. So, uh, it happens. The Orangemen need something to happen here in a big hurt. Oh, boy. Thurman really nailed by Al Boyd Mays as he crosses the 30-yard line. Mountaineers just fly into the football now. And they are winning this game on defense. And we come in here with one of the most high-powered offenses in the country. Ranked second in points at 44 points a game. Ranked sixth in total yardage per game. Yet their defense is winning this football game. And that's not surprising because defense usually wins big football games. On the season, that defense giving up less than 17 points a game. Davis in motion. Char back to throw. As time hits Johnston out of the backfield. And he is hit hard there by Preston Waters. And it's quarter number three here at Mountaineer Field to a close and better than 65,000 now have just 15 more minutes to wait for an undefeated season it's West Virginia 21 and Syracuse 3 how does the CFO of Porsche stay ahead of the competition AT&T for the highest performance long distance service make sure you hear thank you for using AT&T when the president of Walt Disney World goes around the world, how does he get back to Main Street USA? AT&T. For easy access to our operators from overseas, make sure you hear. AT&T USA Direct, may I help you? And now, on with the opera. <laughs> From the people who brought you big screen television comes the sound to go with it. Frankly, my dear, I don't give a... Introducing Mitsubishi Home Theater Systems. Now playing at a dealer near you. Rosebud. Introducing Stanley Cordless Tools with power that won't quit. Because unlike many other cordless tools, the new Stanley cordless drill and cordless screwdriver are designed with removable, rechargeable battery packs. So the only time they stop working is when you do. At 
16 Bedford Street, the toast is with fine crystal. On Astor Lane, a powerful telescope probes the night sky. And over on Shore Road, a new TV is entertaining the Kagans. All these things were bought with Visa Gold, which protects them against loss, theft, damage, and doubles the manufacturer's warranty. And with Visa Gold, you can get this protection at nearly three times as many places as American Express. Visa Gold. It's everywhere you want to be. ESPN is your ticket to the NFL when the Patriots and Dolphins go head-to-head. -head. The Patriots pack the punch on their playoff drive that leaves opponents red, white, black, and blue. The Dolphins' Dan Marino connects with the Marx Brothers, Duper and Clayton, and offense is the secret word. The New England Patriots and Miami Dolphins battle head-to-head -head on NFL Sunday Night Football at 8 Eastern, live on ESPN. Not since 1922 has West Virginia gone undefeated, and they were 10-0-1. They had a tie. They've never had a regular season undefeated. 11 wins, 15 minutes left here at Mountaineer Field, separating this year's 88 edition from the rest of the 96 others. Third down and four. Davison Sloman. In the flat, it's Johnston. He's the man they always go to in the clutch, and he's got enough for the first down. But it looks like we may have a penalty flag in the holding area against Syracuse as they continue. There it is to self-destruct. If it's not turnovers, it's penalties on key third down plays. McPherson lamenting. This is a hard-fought football game. There's a lot of hitting going on, a lot of good playing football playing going on it's just the turnovers have been the difference in the football game and now it's starting to be a change of determination because it's really going everything for West Virginia and Syracuse is starting to really lose its edge Take a look at that, Denny. Misery index, five turnovers. They haven't allowed a sack, but you have five turnovers. Sacks are unimportant. Drop passes, two. Seven penalties for 40 yards. So your turnovers and penalties, that's the difference in this football game. Third down and 14, but the Orange has had any hope of pulling out this one late. They're going to have to get something started right here. Looked like the receiver moved upfield. Sacked is Shar and... Uh, the penalty flags flew. And yeah, now you can add one sack to the misery index. Yeah, now they're going to have to punt from uh, their own five-yard line, which means West Virginia's going to get great field position and a chance to close it out. Illegal motion on the offense. The penalty is declined. Fourth down. You see what the score is right now, Denny, 21-3? to three. Well, 14 directly, directly from turnovers, plus Syracuse lost seven when they fumbled inside the five. So that's 21 points on turnovers almost directly. Syracuse will have to punt it away. Number one, Brandis Bell stands back at about his 40-yard uh, line. Excellent kick. High hanger. Bell. Takes the fair catch right at the 40-yard line. 46-yard punt with 14.03 left in this one. It's 21-3. West Virginia looking for an 11-0 record. There are many good reasons why this pickup, the tough big Ford, has been the best-selling pickup for 12 straight years over the second-place Chevy. Like Ford. Mountaineers break the huddle first down and 10. They own the football and a 21-3 lead. This time it's Aaron Evans, the second string fullback for a couple of yards. Now let's head down to John Snyder. It's been a long time since they've gone undefeated, John. Indeed it has, Vinny. With me is Steve Thomas, a longtime West Virginia fan and a lot of other West Virginia fans back here. People in this state have waited many, many years for something like this, haven't Exactly. About 90-some years, exactly. How you feel about it? You've been coming to games since the mid fifth. This is me as no John here in a moment, the slipping to the turf, incomplete Major pass, Andrew Johnson, the intended receiver, will bring up now third down and eight. 
We told you the weather was going to affect this game. Well, you could say that some of these fans are so excited they're speechless. That's right. Fantasy cheerleader. Well, it's quite a fantasy for, uh, again, for everybody in this stadium, for Don Nealon, for West Virginia football. Again, this is the whole state rallies around. They have no pro teams. This is their major college. This is, the, this is their pro team. Harris with a straight drop. Oh, has a man wide open. And it's the backup tight end, Adrian Moss. You know, it's funny. We talked to Don Nealon before this game yesterday, and we asked him, Don, you know, nine years ago when you came here, did you think that you could contend for a national championship and go undefeated? He said, are you kidding? We just try to find some football players who could be competitive. Yeah, that's all they wanted to do was to compete, and, uh, you know, you look at the progress he's made over his career here. Now he's got this school vying for a national championship. Look at those yardage in the second half. They're just wearing down Syracuse. Andre Johnson has his feet clipped right out from underneath him by number 55, Dan Busey. And with 12.56 and the clock rolling, West Virginia is in good shape. And then we've got some updated scores. Something for a tie out there. Huh? Oregon State 21-10. Big game of the day, though, USC with a victory over UCLA. Tailback. This time it's Andrew Johnson across the 40, down near about the 36-yard line. Do you see again in on the tackle? He's been a busy backer here this evening. And I tell you, this is bring back too many memories of games where you're behind and you just keep getting knocked backward and getting knocked backward, and you hit the man, he drags you for three or four yards. It's a whole momentum shift that just demoralizes you on defense you can't do you cannot pick yourself back up you got, if you don't make a big play now defensively the game's going to be over hand off one more time and it's just straight ahead tailback oriented football do you see again i hate to sound redundant but uh, he's in on the tackle one more time along with bovaro as well and you're saying to yourself in the huddle what can i do to turn this game around what can we do defensively to change it and you keep looking at each other, and the answer basically is nothing. Well, again, the point that we made on a number of occasions, the defense has played, I think, very well here this evening for Syracuse. The offense turned it over a few times in tough field position. That's been the difference. Uh, converting two turnovers into 14 points. Fullback Aaron Evans crashes over the left side for about three or four yards. And you don't want West Virginia to get ahead because they just keep pounding you and pounding you and pounding you. And all of a sudden, you know, if you don't have anything to get excited for, it's tough to keep taking that pounding and come back for the next play. Now the one question that I want to ask is, does Bino Cook have a, an 800 number back in Connecticut so that he can start to receive some of the phone calls from the fans here in West Virginia? Well, Dick McPherson's not going to call him, I'll tell you that. 11.05 and the clock is rolling. Harris looking for more. Brandis Bell, a juke step at the 20 and chased out of bounds. Oh, they're going to say that he's out at about the 16. And Brandis Bell out of the Fort Lauderdale area nearly took that one the distance. As far as everything he's done tonight, now watch him zip the ball all the way across field. This only goes downfield about 10 yards, but it's about a 30-yard throw on the line to Grants. But I watch him fake out number 24, Chris Ingram. Hey, use the sideline, my friend. That's a that's a help to you. Don't let him go down the sideline. Grannis Bell, 150 pounds, but that's how you survive when you're 150 pounds. You don't let anybody hit you. Okay, you're going to tell me that you'd have been able to stop him out there on the perimeter, huh? I'd have tried to push him out of bounds. Uh, <laughs> you'd have been great. Grabbing like most people for air. <laughs> I just said, help, come from the inside. Where's my pursuit? Oh, boy. But you let him go down the sideline. You don't have any help there. You got to stay close enough so when he goes, you can push him out of bounds. But, again, it's easy to say that from up here. Well, I, don't want, I don't want you to pull out any old films and show where that didn't, where I didn't follow my own advice. I don't think a fan has left Mountaineer Field here yet. They're going to savor each and every moment of game number 11. Harris on the option. Pitches it off to Andre Johnson. Fights inside the 15. Out of bounds at about the 12-yard line. Terry Wooden providing the opposition. Terry Wooden played that picture perfect. He stood up the tight end, controlled the tight end. And when the pitch came around from under Johnson, he just threw the tight end right into the running back and knocked him out of bounds. 
Terry Wooden, again, one of the finest outside linebackers in the country. He's going to be an NFL star. Well, we've talked so much about West Virginia in its season. Uh, eight and two if they go down to defeat this evening is Syracuse with Pittsburgh still left on the schedule. An outstanding year for the Orangemen as well. Harris back under pressure now. Gets the throw off and doesn't hit anything but about the five-yard line. He threw that one away. There really wasn't anybody in the general area, but he does not get the flag. They could have called that intention of rounding without probably getting much of an argument. But they did. And again, when things are going right, everything goes right, including the officials' calls. Not the greatest evening in the world for a college football game, but I'll guarantee you no one feeling the effects of this one if you're rooting for West Virginia. Charlie Baum has missed four in a row now. We'll see if this short one can bring back his confidence. 28-yard attempt. And he likes that one. Gun goes off. And now it's 24-3. West Virginia on top and heading for a perfect 11-0 season. We'll be back right after this. Critical acclaim for our performance. The Ford Probe is one of the finest front-wheel drive performance cars in the world. Fiesta Bowl bound for a January 2nd date with Notre Dame leading... 24 to 3 at this stage. Mm. Orange juice for sure. Mountaineer style. They're squeezing the orange of Syracuse. They've squeezed the ball away from them five times. And again, I don't know how many times we can say it. That's the difference in this football game. What a great rivalry, though, these two teams through the years since 1945. And Syracuse leads the rivalry 21-14. Obviously, they're going to lose one here this evening. Unless something major happens in the last 10 minutes. But uh, last year, West Virginia tried to spoil that undefeated season and couldn't quite pull it off. Kick and Walker takes it on the run at the 12. It's a couple of blocks and then gets belted at the 27 yard line. Really, we thought this was going to be an offensive football game, but the turning point stand came very early, or I should say late in the first quarter. Yeah, about 25 seconds left, seven to nothing. West Virginia at this point. Todd Philcox down the line option. Now they don't play Philcox. They let him go to the inside. He takes the gap, goes down inside the five, down to out to one. But watch number 22, Bo Orlando, throw his 173 pounds into Philcox, separate the ball from him. And that's the type of effort that's winning football. 173 pounds of inspiration, Bo Orlando. And that's the turning point. McPherson goes back with the senior Philcox here for the closing moments in this one. Counter play handoff. And Owens gets a little room and then has finally stood straight up at about the 37-yard uh, line. Now let's head down to John Snyder, who's going to discuss security here at Mountaineer Field. Well, Denny, as you know, with 9.45 to go, Syracuse. But West Virginia officials are about the end of the game. In the past here, the fans who stormed onto the field and torn down the goalposts. And behind me, you see some of the patrolmen, a security force tonight of nearly 150 state patrolmen. And normally... Forces 34 40. They want to keep the people off the field when it's over. Bill Cox looks downfield and then swings it out, and it's been that kind of an evening for the Orange of Syracuse. Heck, I think when you win your first Lambert trophy in 97 years, your first undefeated season, yeah, that was one tie in that under undefeated season, that you deserve to let them run on the field and have a good time. I've been a part. Uh, of fans running on the field both when we've won and when we've lost and uh, I always felt it was part of football that was part of the being a football fan is being able to enjoy your victories whether it disrupted some other team or not that's just part of it when you get beat you take it like a man split backs for Phil Cox twin set to the right side third down and four It's time to take a look. Lofts it out and gets belted at the last moment. And Owens, one more time, can't come up with a play. And now Dick McPherson faces fourth down with four yards to go and 9-19, or make that 9-14 rather, left in this one. Holding his left arm this time. He had Michael Opens late, but watch the hit here. <laughs> no wonder he threw it high as he gets squashed right in the middle by Jim Gray, number 98. The punter is on. Cooper Gardner. Brandis Bell back deep. Low 
first snap, but a beautiful kick. Oh my, all the way into the end zone, over the top of number one. 66-yard punt, but it's probably too little too late for Syracuse. 24-3, West Virginia on top. Ads is smart advertising. And West Virginia now completely in control of their own destiny. Get a couple of solid first downs here. And oh my, Andrew Johnson takes off and crosses on it past the 35 to about the 37. If they continue at this pace, they'll be able to run out the clock. Well, they're running out Syracuse, that's for sure, because they're just knocking him back. There's Todd Philcox, a uh, fifth-year senior, getting his first chance to play. And uh, it's a disappointing end of the regular season. They do obviously have the bowl game left. Watch this blocking. Just opens up a huge gap. Again, the linebackers get split. And when you're in a Oklahoma defense, a 3-4, the two inside linebackers have to work in pairs. When they get split, it ends up in big plays like that with Rondo Johnson. Full back right straight up the middle. Now talked consistently tonight about West Virginia playing Notre Dame in the Fiesta Bowl. Syracuse will be heading to the Hall of Fame Bowl to play either Auburn or LSU. Mm -hmm. So they have one more opportunity to uh, erase this disappointment. But you, know, you talk about the two inside linebackers getting split. One of the reasons is they've had problems at the nose guard. Fred DeRitchie's playing there, but they lost you know, their great nose guard from a year ago, a first-round draft pick. Uh, we'll talk about that in a second. with the play action stops looks for somewhere to run coughs up the football and West Virginia is going to recover it about the 39 Freiburg with the hit on Harris shook the ball loose He scrambles around, and the one thing you don't want to do is make a mistake and allow somebody back in the football game is holding it like the proverbial loaf of bread. I know it's a cliche, but that's what it looks like. The ball pops out. Luckily, again, everything going right for West Virginia. Here's the three wide receiver offense down in the stretch. Third and seven. Trying to provide some pressure. Downfield it goes, and pulling it in is Calvin Phillips. That ball was right on. The money inside the 35. <laughs> Tell you what, if I was getting ready for Notre Dame, I would use this formation time and time again. Watch the throw to his left, a tough throw on the sideline. He hits him right on stride as he's going out of Calvin Phillips, right? <laughs> I mean, could you ask him for any better than that as you're going out of bounds? Give me the ball, let me run out of bounds. That's a safety on a wide receiver, Marcus Paul. That's a tough matchup. You should win that if you can give him time to throw. One more time up the middle. We've talked about Notre Dame. Do you suspect that perhaps Lou Holtz and company watching this one this evening on ESPN? I'm sure there's a lot of people. You know, Dick McPherson talked about that last night. He says, you know, from everybody in college football that gets to play in the afternoon, ESPN has become their network because that's the games they get to see, the ones that are played here on uh, our night games and our late afternoon games are the ones they get to see. I'm sure there's a lot of Notre Damers watching this football game while thinking about the USC. 24 to 3, the Mountaineers on top. Harris thought about pitching for a moment and then thought the better of it and hung on this time. Yeah, he remembered the last time he made that late pitch that uh, ended up hitting the ground. Dick McPherson, right in front of that play, was probably yelling, pitch it, pitch it. Please to one of my guys. Oh, what a great competitor he is. Uh, Last night we had a long chat with him and the very philosophical about uh, Syracuse and where the program is right now. He said, I'm not going to be happy until we're an eight, nine, ten game winning team every year through like the early 90s. Quiet yardage by Major Harris. And drop back and look downfield. On the crossing pattern, it's the tight end. Wins heading for the end zone. Bumped out of bounds at the wall. Talk about protection. If you're going to run delay patterns, you need protection. Watch Harris just sit back up. The tight end is just delaying at the line of scrimmage, just sitting there, waiting. Now, you see him at the right-hand side of your screen as he comes across real late over the middle. He is delayed. Nobody 
picks him up. They forget about him when he blocks. He takes the ball, looks around, says, geez, where's the defense? Then he sees that red pylon. He's just going to get to that pylon, but Terry Wooten, who has not quit, goes all the way across the field to not win out of bounds at the one. Mountaineers trying to put the finishing touches on this drive. And up over the top, it's Andre Johnson. And uh, this one is pretty much all said and done. behind the secondary and just can't quite get to the football. He was behind the secondary. <laughs> well, football in this uh, game, Danny, is a lot like baseball. You look at the dugouts, you look at the bench, you don't need a scoreboard. They'll tell you who's winning and losing in the football or baseball game. Well, in your illustrious career at Ohio State, uh, you went undefeated one year, but you had some other tough ones. Twice uh, we lost a national championship in the last game, went undefeated uh, once to Jim Plunkett in Stanford, and once to Bo Sandbach in Michigan in his first year up there. Gets it off quickly, the screen that time to Daryl Johnston, and Johnston couldn't quite hang on. And a flag thrown uh, for roughing the passer, obviously. Uh, maybe a sympathy flag. I think uh, that uh, these guys are coming after him. He's taking a pounding, but they come through like a sieve here. Here's Marlett. And, uh, you know, I guess that's a close call. I think they're giving him the benefit of the doubt there. Marlett uh, comes in just for the dime. He's a pass rushing specialist, uh, fifth-year senior kid. I think he wanted to get his hit in. I got a personal foul. Loving the passes on the defense. First round. Well, there's no love lost between the Mountaineer fans and the Orangeman fans. Uh, 
We're going to take a pool up here and figure when the last fan is going to leave the stadium tonight. I think it's going to be in the wee hours before a lot of these people leave. Yeah, we're going to, going to be, as you said, savor, midnight oil. savor this victory <laughs> this season. We've got time off now until January the 2nd in the Fiesta Bowl. All they got to do is root for Notre Dame next week. Twin set receivers out to the right side. First down and 10. There's show blitz. The pitch. And Owens is on the move. Breaks contained down inside the 15. Scrambles down to the 14-yard line. Now they went to the unbalanced line, put an extra blocker over to that side. It's worked for them time and time again tonight. Again, they have not done poorly offensively. They just have turned the football over. They've moved the ball up and down. We saw they had almost 200 yards at halftime and only three points. And we're down 14 to three. So, you know, 200 yards, 400 for a game. That's what they've been averaging. And they've been 91 going into this football game. Also averaging better than 31 points a game. They have only three to show here this evening. Trying to score one for pride's sake right now, though. Owens wrapped up at the 15 and a loser yard on the play. And uh, Robert Pickett, who had a big fumble recovery earlier this evening, in on the tackle. And there's pride on the other side of the football, too. No matter what the score is, defensively, you don't want to allow the other team into the end zone. In fact, I'm sure there's a lot of the first team guys that maybe not playing right now says, Coach, let me go back in. We don't want to get in the end zone because defenses take a lot of pride in the number of points they've given up, the number of yards they've given up. They want to win the football game first, but there's that pride that defensive units have in their accomplishments. in motion. So box for the option pitch. Up to force the play. Is number 47, Willie Edwards, who also had an interception return for a touchdown this evening, and he's had a big night as well. Again, you just have to look at the faces, don't you, Danny? Just a minor disappointment, though. Dick McPherson's really got this program at Syracuse on a roll. Oh, amazing. You win 20 of your last 22 ball games. The other stat that I found uh, very instrumental are the fact that they have won nine out of their last 10 road games. How tough is that? Dick McPherson felt like they had a real shot here this evening. Into the end zone it goes, and it's a touchdown. So finally, with 341 left, Phil Cox hits Rob Moore in the end zone, and the Orangemen score themselves a TD. That's one of the cases where throwing the ball behind the receiver really was a benefit for Todd Philcox because it's what's known as a post corner. He had man-to-man -man coverage. The receiver went to the inside and back to the outside. The defensive back was waiting for him, but he threw it behind him, and then Moore just turned around and made the play. You'll see Willie Edwards, 47, waiting on the outside where he knew the pattern was coming. And you do a lot of film study. You know down deep a lot of teams like to use post corner to score on. So he was waiting there for it, and the guy just stopped on him and Phil Cox threw the ball for a touchdown. Now they're going for two. Seven times teams have tried to go for two on West Virginia this year. Three have been successful. Trying to get back to the 500 mark. The receiver is open, but it's batted away. And no flag is thrown. So it's an incomplete pass in the end zone. John Snyder and check in on uh, the radio network here in West Virginia. Well, you know, Denny, earlier in the game, we played for the fans the radio broadcast of last year when Syracuse won the game so dramatically in the closing seconds. As you know, Willie Edwards intercepted a pass and scored for West Virginia in the first half of this game. Here's how Jack Fleming called it on the Mountaineer Network. Slot tight left, white man to the right. Bill Cox back deep. They're after him. He dumps it right up the middle. Picked off. Intercepted by Terod Ellis. He back over the 30. He's fighting for the 25 and a stop at the 27. They came up the middle. Ellis with the interception. Mike Bernard makes the stop. And the clock shows a minute 21 to go. Great blocking on the part of Pat Marlette on that one. 
And, of course, that wasn't the touchdown play, but uh, Jack was getting a little excited about that pick over the middle, wasn't he? Well, you can't blame him. There's been so many turnovers. It's hard to find the right one to go with the uh, radio broadcast. But, uh, yeah, he was excited, and everybody here in West Virginia is excited, except uh, Rod, Moore, Rod Moore, who just scored a touchdown. You can't even smile when you score a touchdown at this point in the game. You're just saying, well, I'm glad we got it, but it's nothing to cheer about. Moore only a sophomore is the 11th TD on the season, and Dick McPherson speaks in glowing terms of number 14, and a lot of people have compared him already favorably with Art Monk. Onside kick, hands team in for West Virginia. And they give it a try, and it's drilled to Keith Wynn, who... Had a big reception just a while ago to set up the final score thus far for West Virginia. Up next on ESPN, number three, Miami versus the LSU Tigers, ranked 11th in the country. Bob Carpenter and Kevin Kiley down in Baton Rouge, Louisiana, to uh, finish up what's been an unbelievable showdown Saturday on ESPN. Well, do you think uh, Nealon started to relax a little bit at this point, Stan? Uh, yeah, I think a few minutes ago he let up and uh, knew that he had that 11th win, that undefeated season, something he's never had in his 30 years of coaching, had in his hip pocket. Now he just wants to go out and add the crown jewel to uh, this season, which would be a Fiesta Bowl victory. False start on the offense, first and 15. All right, now let me put you on the spot a little bit. Uh, what about matching up against Notre Dame? You've seen the Fighting Irish on numerous occasions this year. I think it's going to be a great matchup. Tony Rice is a very similar type quarterback to Major Harris, although Major Harris throws the ball better. Both have outstanding defenses. I think it's going to be a great, great uh, football game. If they open it up a little bit for West Virginia, they'll give Notre Dame all they can handle. Brandis Bell is in motion. The pitch to Andrew Johnson, who scored his last carry. The new quarterback now for West Virginia as well, Greg Jones. All right, we've talked about West Virginia. What about Syracuse against LSU or against Auburn? Two very talented teams there. Well, I think Syracuse is a lot better than they showed tonight. Obviously, they self-destructed. They're not going to make that many turnovers. 16 on the season, five tonight. You know, they're not that kind of football team. I expect them to come back strong in their bowl appearance. Andrew Johnson again is trying to grind out a few yards and keep that clock rolling. We're under three minutes to play here. Mount Mountaineer Field. Syracuse had one other poor outing against Ohio State. In Ohio State's first game under John Cooper. Ohio State was emotionally high. Syracuse made some mistakes in that game, but they came back and won seven games in a row, eight games in a row. And they come into tonight uh, on a high. Now they've got to pick up what's left from this football game, their bruised egos, their bruised bodies, and get themselves ready to play one final game. And this one's been a real war down there in the trenches. How many times this evening have we seen helmets go flying in this one? Well, you can look out in the field now and you can see the guys that uh, are still playing hard. They're, they're star players. Rob Burnett just made a big play there for a loss of two. We saw Terry Wooten run all the way across the field to knock Keith Wynn out at the one-yard line, play the option strong. Their star players are still playing hard. That tells you a lot about the way they've been trained and the program they have at Syracuse. And we'll be back for the final 204 here from Morgantown, West Virginia, after we take this final timeout. NFL game? Miss anything? Well, someday see all the key plays from every game on ESPN's NFL Primetime. Week after week, NFL Primetime is football's fastest hour. With Chris Berman, Pete Dax, Thelm, and Tom Jackson. See it all in one place. NFL Primetime. Sunday night, just before NFL Sunday Night Football on ESPN. every single flight one of these makes stand the 60,000 professionals of United Airlines rededicated to giving you the service you deserve come fly the friendly skies 
pretty much tells the story with 204 left. Back deep inside the 10 is Chris Ingram. Pressure is on. A low driving punt. That went into the end zone. So Syracuse will start for the final time this evening from their 20 yard line. Coming up immediately following this one, Miami and LSU and Baton Rouge. Who do you like in that one, Denny? Oh, don't put me on the spot. I tell you what, it's awful hard to beat those folks from LSU down there in their own backyard. I tell you what, Bino Cook's been right on West Virginia all year long. Do you argue with him picking LSU down there? They said he'll they'll for surely beat Miami. I don't believe him for a minute. I mean, even a blind squirrel finds an acorn. <laughs> <laughs> so you like the Canes, is that what you're telling me? I tell you what, they're tough. Oh, you bet they are. Tough going down there in uh, Baton Rouge. Uh. Makes the draw over the middle, and Davis is wide open. And he is a train to pull down at the 45. Pulled down by number 99, Basil Proctor. He comes in for this dime defense. Basil, 6'4", 250. Transferred here from the University of Miami. That's the Hurricanes. Okay, he was a defensive back there. He was a strong safety that gained some weight. <laughs> Fleet of foot. Dead ball. Personal foul on the defense. A little exuberance from some of the younger players getting a chance to uh, play in this season finale, regular season finale, the cap of the uh, undefeated season for West Virginia. 25 seniors on this squad this year. What a year it's been for them. Bill Cox under pressure, steps up, lets it go. Crossing pattern, and it's caught there by Deval Glover. Again, the defense is going to start uh, getting a little tougher here. They don't want them to allow them in the end zone again. They don't want to make it even look respectable. Trying to give Syracuse a lot of credit. They're in there doing everything they possibly can until the final tick of the clock. And that's where Dick McPherson has taught his troops through the years. Over the middle, uh -oh, this one's picked off by Chris Herring. Herring finally bounced out of bounds across the 30-yard line, and that should just about set things up here for Don Nealon and company. Appropriate, I guess you would say. A turnover effectively ends the football game. Number six for Syracuse. Syracuse with half as many turnovers tonight as they've had all season long. Kind of a nightmare for them. And they're living that nightmare right now. It's going to be a long trip back to New York. Long bus ride to the airplane. A long flight. I tell you what, it's not going to be a fun couple weeks preparing for that football game. Although Dick McPherson said the one thing he wants to do is take his team down to Tampa and have a good time, a reward for his players. Great thing about college football, though, is you can always come back next week. Right? Luckily, they're going to a bowl game and are able to do that. Yeah, don't true. always get that opportunity into the season. Yep. There's a lot of seniors playing their last game. Under a minute to go here now. I remember when we were undefeated my junior year. We beat Michigan the last game of the year. We were both undefeated at that point. We won. We got to the Rose Bowl. Great season for us. We went to the Carther Bowl. But we lose to Stanford and uh, Jim Plunkett. Ruined the whole season. Yep. And you know, we don't year to come back. You don't remember it as an undefeated season. Andrew Johnson continues to grind out the yardage, and the, probably his effort personifies West Virginia football. Not a starter, but a guy who has really contributed throughout his career. Yeah, he's probably got enough yardage to go up to number three all time here at West Virginia.
Well, Don Nealon has won it all, 11-0, and now the key. Can Miami beat LSU in Baton Rouge? You'll have to wait to find out. That's coming up next on ESPN. So long, everyone, from Morgantown. All right, Denny, thank you very much, and showdown And You win if you match two, three, four, five, and six of the winning numbers in exact order. Tonight's winning number, 278. Good luck. But unless you were out of the world or holed up in a mountain cabin deer hunting for the last week or so, you know that West Virginia and Notre Dame have agreed to meet in the January 2nd Fiesta Bowl at Tempe, Arizona. West Virginia wrapping up a perfect 11-0 season on Saturday, while Notre Dame with one regular season game remaining this Saturday at number two, Southern Cal. Number one against number two. Some anxious West Virginia eyes will be watching that one, you can bet. The Mountaineers maintained a rather lofty position in the top 10 or top 20, top whatever. West Virginia still four in Scripps Howard Associated Press, USA Today, and UPI, and are still number five on the Sporting News poll. The Mountaineers stayed right where they were with a very dominating performance against the Orange Men of Syracuse. It was a must win, and to maintain their goals, they had to put it in the W column. Let's take a look at some of the action. Here's Charlie Bauman kicking off to get the ball underway. It's a 27-yard return, and the Orange show a little fire early in this ball game. West Virginia quickly forces the punt. The Mountaineers have the ball right back. A.B. Brown on a sweep to the left side. A gain of 12 yards. He's forced out of bounds. The last play of the drive, Craig Taylor up and over for the touchdown. West Virginia takes a 7-0 lead in the ball game. Todd Philcox, the Syracuse quarterback. Fakes on the inside, then passes. The ball is deflected, slapped right back in his face, as a matter of fact, by Theron Ellis of West Virginia, number 66. Phil Cox keeps on the option play, gets it all the way down to the two, hit hard, loses the ball. Robert Pickett comes up with it for West Virginia. Craig Taylor, another big run, this one good for 10 yards as we move into second period play. Kevin Green, a 43-yard field goal for Syracuse, and the Orange tighten it up somewhat. Syracuse ball once again. Owens on the inside has the ball stripped away. And Chris Herring comes up with the fumble recovery. It's West Virginia's ball. Syracuse once again. Phil Cox back to pass. Comes over the middle. Intercepted Theron Ellis. Five yards tacked on here because of a face masking penalty. And West Virginia gets it even closer as A.B. Brown takes the ball all the way down. To about the one and a half. That's a 21-yard gain. Taylor for the touchdown. West Virginia has a 14-3 lead at this point. See the time there in the lower right of your screen. Phil Cox upfield. Diving interception by Preston Waters. Here's Harris back to pass once again. Comes out of the pocket as only he can. And hurdles a man right here. That's dangerous territory. But a big gain for Major Harris. Bill Cox meets Chris Parker, not the way he wanted to. From the Syracuse backfield, again, Todd Philcox back to pass, goes out into the flat, and the 47 Morgantown High School product gets the football. Downfield he comes, it's Willie Edwards, 49-yard touchdown return. Char into the ball game for the Orange men now, and he is sacked, one of the many on the evening by the West Virginia defense. Back goes the major. Looks over the middle, and he is complete to Adrian Moss for another big piece of real estate. Harris, back to pass again. Watch the fake on the end of this one. Grantis Bell hauls it in, gives a hip and a head fake to the inside, goes outside, and he gets around his man. What great body control. Here's Charlie Bauman on for a field goal, and West Virginia continues now to stretch it out. The Major, back to pass, gets beautiful protection again. Downfield, how many times have we seen this? The tightrope catch by Calvin Phillips. The Mountaineers get even closer. Major, back to pass again, fake the option. This time the finesse pass over the middle. That's Keith Wynn, the big tight end, and he's bumped out of bounds very close to pay dirt. The final two yards, that's Andre Johnson for the touchdown. West Virginia continues to rack him up. Phil Cox, back to pass, finds his man in the end zone, touchdown. The Orange aren't through yet, but this pretty well iced it. Chris Herring comes up with a big, big interception. The Mountaineers cut off a Syracuse drive. 
West Virginia going for the unbeaten season. Don Nealon has it in the pocket. 31-9 the score. West Virginia comes up with the unbeaten season. 11-0 feels good even now, and it will for some time to come. Time now to hand out the awards for the West Virginia Syracuse ball game. Our key centurion player of the game, this award goes to uh, not one, not two, not three, but uh, a little more than that. If you happen to be among the 65,127 on hand, you get the key centurion player of the game award. It goes to the Mountaineer fans on hand Saturday night for the Syracuse game. The Caterpillar Toughest Yard, this one you have seen already. It is a defensive gem. And let's go once again to Syracuse with the ball in hand, Todd Philcox. Down to the goal line, has the ball stripped. Robert Pickett recovers. He Centurion presents the WVU Marching Band in concert, capping off WVU Day in Charleston. Monday, November 28th, 7.30 p.m. at the Charleston Civic Center. Tuesday, November 29th, 8.15 p.m. at the WVU Creative Arts Center. Hear the pride of West Virginia from Key Centurion Bank Share, building our communities together. The 1988-89 basketball season at West Virginia University is underway with a win over the Swedish traveling team just the other night and officially begins tomorrow night as West Virginia takes on Robert Morris, the beginning of what's going to be a sweet basketball season. It's good to have Gail Catlett with us. And Gail, you're the first coach I've ever seen who, who had his new glasses get headlines in the local newspaper, but uh, you've gone to that. And you look very astute. Uh, some of my friends would he think we're going to have a good basketball season because I can officially see this year. They said <laughs> last year I couldn't see to call the plays. So uh, I think they'll be helpful to me. Let's talk personnel. West Virginia came on the court against the Swedish ball club. 11-point win, but it was much more of a convincing ball game than that. A good barometer for you, I'm sure, to go back and look at film and, and uh, make some adjustments here and there. But it appears that the driving force of this ball club this year again will be Daryl Prue. Well, Darrell had a very good game along with Chris Brooks and uh, Herbie Brooks. Uh, I was pleased with the game, Woody, because we got to play so many people and look at some different combinations. And I hope we're going to have some other games we can do that because we want to use our non-conference games, if we can, uh, to do some experimenting because we have so many youngsters uh, that deserve playing time. I want to make sure we get the right combinations. So at this point, uh, uh, we're looking good from that standpoint. We have more depth than last year. We have more size than last year. We have more quickness than last year. And I'm counting on Prue and Herbie Brooks and Steve Berger and Chris Brooks, the veterans, to lead these youngsters out there and do a good job with them. Another guy you introduced, and I think he became an instant hit with Mountaineer fans, Ray Foster, the big guy. I'm telling you, he's going to give you something this year. Well, he's a very talented player, and uh, if he plays nearly like he's practiced, uh, we're going to be in good shape because he's a shot blocker, he's a runner, he runs the court, he's a slam dunker. Uh, he's picked up our system uh, very quickly. At this point, he's been a force. Uh, I just hope that uh, he can adjust in front of the big crowds and blend in there because uh, he's a very fine athlete. In all fairness to Chris Brooks and Ray Foster in their first outing, both suffering from a little bit of the flu. So we didn't see 100% of either one of those young men, but we will before the season's over. I told the press after the game that that's the worst uh, practice or game that Ray Foster's had since he's been here. He didn't play very well that <laughs> night, and everybody thought he did a pretty good job. But uh, he was uh, under the weather, so to speak, he and Chris both. We've had a few bad injuries. If we can get the injuries cleared up and get everybody healthy and everybody going the right direction, this could be an exciting team to watch. Now, right now, the first man off the bench is Rob Samuel. Yes, we're counting on Rob to come in at the guard position. He's a two guard, about six foot four, left handed, three point shooter, uh, has had a knee problem all year, is back probably 80% healthy at this point. But uh, if he's totally healthy, he's a tremendous athlete, really knows the game, mature youngster, and going to be a big help to us. A young man who can hit the shot probably at the Coliseum from the old field house, he can hit him from way downtown, is Tracy Shelton. Tracy has been a little bit of a surprise to me. I knew he was a fine athlete. I knew he was a fine person. I knew he was quick. But he's probably played a little better than I thought he would. I think the year of prep school really helped him at Fort Union Military Academy. He's out of Oak Hill High School here in the state, and I've been very pleased with Tracy, and he's going to be our point guard of the future, no question about that. Now, Sean Jackson is going to contribute this year. He showed flashes last year, and I think what we saw against Sweden was good. And Wade Smith is uh, a little more confident, I think, and he needed a little bit of that this year. We've made an interesting move, Woody. I wasn't pleased with our substitutes at forward at this point, so we moved Sean Jackson to the small forward slot. 
He gives us some quickness running the court, gives us some defensive pressure, gives us some experience in there. I think Sean's going to surprise some folks. And then Wade's a fifth-year senior, Wade Smith. He's a big youngster. Uh, we'll play a lot against zones because he shoots the ball so well, but has practiced uh, extremely uh, 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 hard for us and right now at this point both of those veterans I think are going to help this ball club. Neil in a minute or two we'll see a little bit of a thing here for season ticket uh, aspirants for the foot part of the basketball schedule and certainly it's a very attractive home slate this year you got some toughies in here. Well I think uh, uh, Sports Illustrated can uh, speak better than I can about that last year they picked our non-conference schedule as the second toughest of 300 Division I basketball teams. And so at this point, this schedule is not much different than that. So if the people want to see a tough schedule and a contest almost every night, they ought to come out and watch it. And I understand the season tickets have gone quite well. Matter of fact, uh, they're 500 or so ahead of last year and over 5,000 at this point. So uh, I'm glad to see that because we need some nice support in the Coliseum. And we got some paybacks coming because we got some Bradleys coming in, some Fresno States. Yes, uh, those uh, games made a mark on my mind last year <laughs> and the year before, and I hope our players remember that. I'm going to remind them of it when it comes, uh, comes time. But at this point, uh, we'll go game by game and uh, do some experimenting, but uh, there should be some tough contests in the Coliseum. VPI comes in. Of course, you mentioned uh, Fresno and Bradley. So we've got some tough uh, games. And then on the road, of course, we've got four NCAA clubs. We're at Pitt, we're at Maryland, of course, we're at Marshall, we're at UNC Charlotte, and they all were NCAA clubs last year, so we'll have to play our best to uh, be successful in some of those. Gail, very quickly, and then finally, uh, your feeling about the Atlantic 10 this year. We're picked preseason number two. I think it's a much improved league throughout, not quite as tough at the top, but everybody else is getting better uh, through the middle uh, part of it. I think it's going to be very interesting. Uh, at this point, recruiting has gone well for all the schools. I can see the A-10 putting three or four schools into the NCAA playoff this year. This point of the season, when the basketball season starts, West Virginia fans naturally start asking, where are the tournaments going to be? Has that been lined up this year? Uh, yes, of course. We'll play our postseason tournament in the Palestra in Philadelphia to the final round. And then the two teams in the final round, the highest-seeded team, based on regular season play, will get the home game on their court. So it's very important to win as many games as we can, try to finish first, because if you could, you could play the championship game on your home court. The 1988 football season had its share of thrills and excitement. Tony Caridi looked at the entire season to date and picked out just a few of the outstanding big plays of 1988. Here's his exciting report. You know, they say that time flies when you're having fun. Well, if that's true, then this has to be the fastest Mountaineer season ever. You know, we're less than 30 days away from Christmas, and the time seems just right to start passing out some presents. First up, a gift to the Mountaineer running backs, and first in line is A.B. Brown. The 64-yard jaunt in the second half against the Pitt Panthers left no doubt as to who would come out on top in this year's backyard brawl. And here's a stocking stuffer for our good friend Andre Johnson. It may not have been the straw that broke the camel's back, but it did the Lions in on this afternoon. 55 yards for the touchdown. But wait a second, there is more. Eugene Napoleon says A.B. Brown and Under Johnson aren't the only guys who can find the goal line. This 69-yard scamper stands as the longest run from scrimmage this season. In our If It's Not Broke, Don't Fix It category, say hello to Major Harris, who made the wrong way look the right way on this 26-yard rock and roller right up the middle. I don't think for a second that all the Mountaineers can do is run. As my good buddy Brent Musburger once said, all right, look at the time, look at the arm. Touchdown, West Virginia. The magician does it again. Now, what would Christmas be without someone who doesn't want to share? Keith Wynn says, no, it's mine, mine, all mine, stay away. Now, if you found that segment to be a bit offensive, don't be concerned because the Mountaineer defense of 88 was sure to put a smile on your face. Ah, Willie Edwards. He had reason to smile because he gets a pair of bookends for Christmas. He has the honor of scoring the first Mountaineer touchdown of the season thanks to a blocked punt by teammate Daryl Whitmore. And then in the regular season finale, it was Willie time again. This third quarter pickoff left no doubt as to who would be the beast of the East in 88. Now, where did Willie get those flashy pass-stealing moves? Well, look no farther than co-captain Bo Orlando, who ran this one 56 yards in West Virginia's 55-24 blowout of Maryland. 
And speaking of the Terrapins, they got a good idea of what teamwork is all about. This Ronaldo Turnbull volley to Chris Parker has to be one of the prettiest interceptions you'll ever see. From pickoffs to put downs, West Virginia finding a way to attack opposing quarterbacks all season. Turnbull leading the way with a dozen sacks this year. While it's the plays on the field that will go down in history, there were many colorful scenes off the field that will long be etched in our memories. You and Alan Hercules there put together something that usually comes somewhere during a banquet when they're introducing people saying, we're going to tell them all at one time, we're not going to announce anybody's name for fear of missing one. Turnbull had 12 sacks, I'm sure there were a dozen others. There were lots of other fine running and passing plays, defensive efforts. It had to be tough to find uh, just those. Exactly. We only went uh, three or four minutes there, Woody, but we could have gone on for a couple of hours and maybe someday we will. I have a feeling toward the end of the season. And you know, the fellow who sits in this chair every week, he isn't here this week, but uh, we cajole with him a little bit every week. We saw tears in his eyes. Very special moment for him. I think, you know, when he, a uh, lot of pressure to get to 11 and 0. When he finally got to that point, first time ever in high school and all of his college coaching days, 30 years he's been in the business, it kind of got to him. Very special moment. Thank you, Tony. Outstanding report once again. Well, I tell you what, back in October of this year, Key Centurion Bank Shares announced a contest called Mountaineer Fantasies. And we caught up with the three winners of the contest at Saturday's game with Syracuse. Let's find out what those fantasies were. Well, I, I have season tickets. I come to ball game all the time. And I saw the applications for the sports fantasy. And my dream was always to be a part of the West Virginia band. So I sent it in and I won. My niece was in the band for uh, five years when she went to school down here. And that's how I come to start coming to Morgantown. And now I'm hooked. I go to all of them, home and away. Well, I've been a long time Mountaineer fan. This is something I've always dreamed about. And when you had the sports fantasy contest, it was custom made. Oh, it's just a couple of my main interests. I got really into basketball and football sports photography down in Logan. So I just a chance to do exciting things, travel, and see something I enjoy, the ball games. I came to the Boston College game with a friend of mine, and it was on the back of the program, and I thought, what the heck, I'll try, well, you know, try anything. So I mailed it in, and I didn't think anything about it. I mailed it in to be a cheerleader, because I had uh, cheered under Bobby Mormon in high school back in 74. It was my last year there. And I uh, mailed in that I'd like to cheer under, here, under her because she influenced my life so much. She always told me, reach for the impossible. Dream those dreams and go after them. And uh, so I mailed it in. And last Sunday she called me and she went, you won your fantasy. And I was like, ah, I can't believe it. What a way to end a great season. Boy, this is the kind of bowl game I've always dreamed of going to. I can just see it now. National TV showing thousands of us in our blue and gold chanting, Let's go, Mountaineers. <sighs> well, I want to invite all of you, win or lose tonight. I know you're going to win, but either way, we're still very proud. And we still want you out there in Phoenix playing the Irish in Notre Dame. The Irish did their part today. Um, 
and they accepted this invitation after their game t uh, this afternoon. So we wanted you to know that before we went out tonight. And again, win or lose, you're going to be in Phoenix, and we're going to love you. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you very much, and Coach Nealon, we gonna accept this? Amen, baby. <laughs> Team, we gonna accept this and go win? Yeah! There's your answer. Thank you very much. That was the bowl invitation this Saturday evening. Well, I strongly disagree with those who said the post-Syracuse game was a once-in-a-lifetime celebration. I think it's gonna happen again. From the Jefferson County farmer to the chemical worker in Kanawha, from the riverboat deckhand on the Ohio River to the coal miners of Monongalia, we all now have an abundant measure of pride for the holiday season. And together, with unity of purpose, we head for Arizona to rewrite another big week in Mountaineer football history. Happy holidays to you and your family. Hopefully, we'll see you in Tempe, Arizona for the 1989 Fiesta Bowl. consideration provided by U.S. Air. We welcome all of our passengers one at a time. The Holiday Inn of Morgantown. Look for officially licensed WVU merchandise from PM Enterprises.